Almost everyone likes to eat and drink things that taste sweet. Whether it's something for dessert, like coffee creamer with morning coffee, or soda, or pop, or whatever you call it, you've probably had something with added sweeteners in it before. Here, I have two bottles of Coke. One is diet, and one is not. They both have sweeteners. The original one, this one, just is a sugar-based sweetener called high fructose corn syrup, which is made to be the same as sucrose, normal table sugar, but it's just much, much cheaper to produce. This Diet Coke has aspartame as a sugar-free sweetener. Aspartame is a very common sweetener, and it's also used in different types of candy and sugar-free gum. Most of the time, if something says it's sugar-free, it probably has aspartame in it. But there are other sugar-free sweeteners out there, like sucralose, which is called Splenda, you've probably heard of that, stevia, and acesulfame potassium, and that is, is largely in a lot of different pre-workouts. This 12-ounce bottle of Coke, or sorry, this 20-ounce bottle of Coke has 65 grams of sugar in it. And yet the recommended daily intake is 24 grams for women and 36 grams for men. So you're already consuming significantly more sugar than you're supposed to on a daily basis. What are the impacts on your health if you drink more sugar than you're supposed to? How about the impacts of drinking artificial sugars like high fructose corn syrup? How about sugar-free sweeteners like aspartame? The clinical trial today helps answer some of those questions. So let's take a look into those. What's up everyone, my name is Henrik and welcome back to another clinical trial review. Today I'm breaking down a study that looked at the sweeteners aspartame, high fructose corn syrup, sucrose, and their effects on the liver, insulin response, and cholesterol levels. This study was published in October of 2021 by doctors Desiree Sagala and Kimber Stanhope and others from the University of California, Davis in California. 50% of adults in the United States consume at least one sugar sweetened drink a day, and they consume an average of 180 calories solely from that. Having an overload of these sugars has actually been associated with a lot of different liver-related problems, along with problems with sugar uptake with insulin, but there haven't been many trials with an intervention actually measuring these variables. Today's trial gives us a pretty clear picture on what could actually be safe and what's not. Let's take a look. This study was an experimental clinical trial with 75 adult participants. The 75 participants are a subgroup from a larger study that looked at different variables. All participants had to be between 18 and 40 years old, have a normal BMI, and have stable, unchanging body weight over six months prior to the start of the trial. Exclusion criteria was basically that you couldn't be, be sick or have any disorders or problems, like you, had to have, you couldn't have diabetes, you had to have normal blood levels, and no liver or kidney problems. You also couldn't be taking various medications and had to stop all vitamins, minerals, and dietary supplements five weeks before starting the study to reduce any confounding variables. In this study, there were three study groups in total. Each group had three sweetened beverages per day that were flavored with unsweetened Kool-Aid powder packets. Group 1's beverages were sweetened with aspartame, group 2 was sweetened with high fructose corn syrup, and group 3 was sweetened with sucrose. Food consumption was standardized for three and a half days during inpatient visits at the beginning and end of the trial, and participants drank their beverages for 12 days in between these three and a half day visits. The drinks had a biomarker in it called riboflavin um, that can be measured in urine and they wanted to make sure the participants were drinking their beverages and they found that everyone did consume it as they should. Because sucrose and high fructose corn syrup have calories, as you might know, as opposed to aspartame, which is effectively zero, the researchers made sure to adjust for this. They made the beverages 25% of the normal energy intake for the participants. That means if your normal energy intake was 2000 calories a day, then you consume 500 calories of sweetened beverages in that day. In total, the researchers measured many, many things at the beginning or baseline and at the end of the study. They measured body composition, fat percentage, liver lipid imaging and content, and liver enzymes, insulin sensitivity, uric acid, and measures of cholesterol. Let's take a look at the results. Taking a look at the results, although body weight significantly increased only in the high fructose corn syrup group, the body weight wasn't significantly different between all three groups. The high fructose corn syrup group and sucrose group had significant increases in liver lipid content relative to aspartame and baseline, as you can see from figure two from the paper. Consumption of high fructose corn syrup and sucrose also led to significant decreases in insulin sensitivity relative to aspartame, as figure three shows here, but all, only sucrose was significantly different relative to baseline. Fasting glucose and insulin levels themselves did not significantly change though. In table three, it shows that high fructose corn syrup and sucrose significantly increased triglycerides, a type of fat, and LDL, but not in the aspartame group. In figure eight, we see that high fructose corn syrup and sucrose increased uric acid, but not in the aspartame group. 
Effectively, high fructose corn syrup and sucrose acted the same way on nearly every outcome, and there were not any significant differences between the two. Breaking down these results, we saw increased liver fat content. In short, this is bad. Typically, your liver has a protective layer of fat around it, but you don't want it to get more fat. If you pass the threshold, you get something called fatty liver disease, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, because technically alcohol can cause it too. And this can lead to very severe forms of liver damage, like something called cirrhosis and hepatitis. We also saw decreases in insulin sensitivity. This is also bad. I've talked about this in a previous trial, but we want our cells to be very sensitive to insulin, meaning they'll respond quickly to glucose in your blood. If not, this can eventually lead to type 2 diabetes. Additionally, we saw higher levels of LDL. This is known as bad cholesterol. And we also saw higher levels of triglycerides, which is also dangerous. Both of these can lead to cardiovascular complications, heart problems like high blood pressure, atherosclerosis, which is the narrowing of your blood vessels, and potentially heart attacks and strokes. Uric acid also increased. Although less important in this study, it's also bad because this stuff can crystallize and cause inflammation primarily in your joints, and you don't want joint problems. Now you might be thinking, great, now I'll just drink things with aspartame, since high fructose corn syrup and sucrose cause these bad things above. Well, just because aspartame didn't affect the variables we looked at today doesn't mean it isn't bad. In fact, the opposite is technically true. An analytical review in April of 2021 looked into aspartame reviewing a famous study from the early 2000s. Looking at aspartame exposed mice, they found that aspartame caused the formation of malignant tumors, which is effectively cancer. They claimed that aspartame caused cancer in this study and confirmed it as a carcinogen or a cancer-causing agent. The FDA supposedly looked at this original trial years ago and didn't originally change their stance on aspartame's definition due to shortcomings in the study, but in my opinion, if there's even some risk of developing cancer and I'm able to control it, then it might be best to do that. So I've added this new section to talk a little bit more about the trial and contextualize the study. This is one of the first studies to compare types of sugar and aspartame and look at these variables specifically. A study in 2013 looked at something similar in older participants, but they looked at what happens if you consume sugar with glucose, and they looked at it in, at it in milk as opposed to Kool-Aid. They found no significant changes in liver fat, but didn't expand on the fact that it significantly increased triglycerides. So although the results of the trials part partially contrast, I do favor the newer study because it looked at more, valuable, more variables, had a larger sample size, and likely isn't confounded by milk. Other studies have also looked at similar things, but they put participants in high caloric surpluses, meaning they also ate a lot more than usual as part of the intervention. A big meta-analysis in 2014 actually looked at all of these studies and said that they were inconclusive because changes in liver fat were confounded by extra caloric intake. If you eat more calories, it could make sense that you put on more fat as opposed to a different processed sugar. As I said before, the group, this group of participants is a subgroup. Other participants in the trial had other percentages of normal energy intake, like 10% and 17.5%. This study looked at 25% of energy requirement, which is pretty large, but realistically that could be anywhere from two to three bottles of Coke or other drinks a day. A separate analysis for that 10% and 75% showed a dose-related increase to the problems you see in the liver, cholesterol, and insulin. As you consume more of these drinks, the problems get worse, which makes sense. All of the same measurements in the same subgroups were still significantly larger than baseline, which means that even consuming 10% of your daily intake in sugary drinks negatively affects you to a significant degree. In general, I would have preferred a control group in this trial or paper. I would have preferred to randomly select participants in their groups to increase the integrity of the trial. And I, it would also strengthen the results to have more people or increase the sample size and for it to occur over a longer period of time. They could have also added more non-sugar sweeteners like acesulfame, potassium, sucralose, or stevia, and that would have been interesting as well. But honestly, I'm sure there is a trial out there that studies that has studied those additives, and I could easily make a video on that too. Asking the important question, why does this matter? Or what can you take away from this study? Well, a trial comparing the use of high fructose corn syrup, sucrose, and aspartame-based beverages found that high fructose corn syrup and sucrose caused increases in liver fat content, cholesterol, reduced low insulin sensitivity, and increased uric acid. All of these changes are pretty bad and, and can potentially lead to liver diseases, cardiovascular problems, and other metabolism-based metabolism diseases. As expected, drinking more sugary drinks are associated with worse problems. Although aspartame is found in sugar-free drinks, it probably isn't a safe alternative as it is basically a carcinogen and 
cause cancer in mice, so that's a, something to note. Unfortunately, nearly all soda and candy have at least one of these sweeteners discussed in this trial, um, and the use of sweeteners has been associated with these pretty harmful effects on your body. I'm not really here making recommendations. I personally drink soda on some occasion, and I will completely stop, but it's still important for me to know the effects of the things I do. Although I do honestly drink, drink this thing, it's called Bai, it tastes pretty good. It's healthier and it's also sweetened by stevia, which I'm going to make videos on, but that's what I do. I don't know, I like it. But they say knowledge is power and now you know more, so hopefully this information, this trial is important to you and useful to you. That's all I really had for today. Subscribe down below for content and comment some topics or clinical trials that you're interested in um, that you'd like to hear more about. Also, feel free to throw advice on how to make these reviews better or more useful or understandable to you guys. But I hope you guys learned something new and have a good one. Thanks.